Hey guys, it's Aislinn and in today's video we're going to be doing a new rainbow technique. I have been wanting to do this for like two years now, but I never had like the right hair color to be able to do it or I already had plans for a different hair color and now I am growing out my roots so I definitely can't do it now that my roots are grown out. This hair color method definitely works the best when you have fully bleached roots and like a nice clean blank blonde canvas. So we're gonna be doing the pinwheel technique today. This technique is so beautiful. I've literally had it on my radar for years now. I just have never gotten around to doing it. So today's the day, I'm so excited. So I already have my colors mixed up. Let me show you what they look like. Try not to spill them. So here's what they're looking like, just some traditional rainbow colors. Obviously, I don't like to do red in my colors. I like to do pink instead of red. I used a lot of different brands for this. I didn't just use one specific dye. For the most part, I used Manic Panic and Brad Mondo's color line. So I'll leave a link to both of those dyes in the description down below in case you want to try them. Obviously, we're not doing it on my hair today. Like I said, I'm growing on my roots. So I have a little helper that we're gonna do it on. We have little Miss Susie Q herself. She has the most perfect platinum canvas to do this on. It is bright white and it is gorgeous. So we're gonna be doing this on her today. So we're gonna get started. If you don't know what the pinwheel technique is, basically you section the hair to look like a pinwheel. So you're gonna pick a point on the head and you're gonna section off from there and it's gonna create like little triangles almost all over the head to resemble a pinwheel. There are many different ways you can do this. A lot of the time people do it from the crown of the head. So right where your hair would naturally part at the crown, they'll start here and then they'll section from that point. I think I'm gonna start on the top of the head, like somewhere in here. Again, just pick a point on the head and section off from there. It doesn't have to be the crown, it doesn't have to be the top of the head. You could literally do the pinwheel technique and pick a spot like way over here and just section from there. Basically, the most important part is sectioning once you have narrowed in that specific point where you want the pinwheel to start. So like I said, I want this to start at the top somewhere and we're gonna do a middle part. Again, you can do a side part. You can do whatever part you particularly want. I'm going to do a middle part. So once we have the middle section parted off here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick my starting point where I want the pinwheel technique to begin. Her crown starts right here. This is where all the hair comes from. I'm gonna start just up a little bit more than that, maybe like an inch forward. So I'm going to part the hair in half and we're going to do six sections on this side, six sections on this side. You can do as many sections as you want. You can just do six sections total or like I'm doing, you could do 12 sections total. It's really up to you. You can do 24 sections. It's whatever you want to do. So from this point, I'm going to section. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do one section here. So you're just going to section from this point all over the head. So here we go. I have my first section down. And as you can see, it looks like a triangle. So all of your sections are going to look like a triangle and they're all going to start where the origin point is right here. I am of course using my duckbill clips. These are amazing for rainbow hair. I've used these since the OG of this channel and they are so good for doing rainbow hair. Now we're gonna move on to our next section. Again, just starting at this origin point right here. And I'm going to create another slice. So here we go, we have our second section. Let me show you what that looks like. As you can see, it's just another triangle. Once you get your initial parts sectioned out, you can go in and make them a little bit more even. I can tell that this one isn't as big as this one. So once I get these all sectioned out, I might go in and adjust the parts a little bit to make them a little bit more even. But if you did wanna see, like we're gonna start with pink here. If you did wanna see more pink, then you could always make this section a little bit bigger. If you wanted to see more orange, you would obviously leave this section like this. So we're gonna go ahead, start at this origin point again and we're just gonna go down. So like I told you guys, I am doing 12 sections total, six on this side, six on this side. And as you can see, I already have three sections down on this side and I'm about halfway through the hair. Okay, so now that we have all the sections done, you can see here, they all originate again at that point. That's the most important part when doing the pinwheel technique, making sure that you're doing all of your partings from that point. So you can see here, 
we have the pinwheel sectioning down. Some sections are bigger than other sections. I'm totally okay with that. With the pinwheel technique, you don't have to be super precise with how big or small the sectionings are. I mean, if you want to, when you want all the colors to be pretty even, then you can spend the extra time going through and just cleaning up the sectioning. Because you're doing the pinwheel technique, it's all going to be blended once the color is rinsed out. Obviously your hair doesn't lay like this naturally, so the color is not going to be laying in these patterns. Once the hair falls in its natural position, those lines are all gonna be blurred and it's gonna like blend together really well. I feel like with this, you get a similar result to the jawbreaker technique, but it's going to be a little bit more blended. You're not gonna have those specific lines. Like on my hair, you can clearly see pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. It's like lines like this. Doing it this way is going to have a similar effect on the ends of the hair, but up at the top, it's going to be a lot more blurred and not as stripey. So if you don't like the stripey look, but you love rainbow hair, this is an easy technique to do on someone else and you're gonna get a beautiful end result. So now that I have my sectioning done, we're gonna go ahead and apply the color. So obviously I am doing six sections on this side, six sections on this side, because I am working with six colors. So I wanna be able to do each color twice. So I'm going to start with pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So that way it creates a perfect rainbow that's being repeated twice. If you have three colors, you can do the three and repeat them four times. If you have two colors, you can just alternate them. There's so much versatility when doing this technique. So let's go ahead and start applying the color. I'm gonna try and sit down with you guys while I do this just so that way you guys can see me and I'm in frame and you guys don't have to stare at my belly button the whole time. I am gonna tie my hair out of the way because, ooh, your bitch already knows I am prone to getting dye everywhere. So I'm just gonna put it behind me. Oh my God, I look crazy. Let's go ahead and start applying the color. I have a towel on my lap, of course. So that way I can wipe my hands off in between each color. Also, I will leave a link to this mannequin head in the description down below. I got it off of Amazon. It's super good quality. It, it's exactly like the ones I used when I was in beauty school. If you're looking for a mannequin head or you're just wanting to practice your techniques, this is a great one. It's already pre-lightened. You don't have to bleach it. So it makes the process a lot easier. I'm just gonna take these clips and pin the rest of the hair out of the way because you still don't want to cross contaminate sections. We're gonna start with this pink section right here. I'm gonna brush it out before we begin. So what I like to do is outline the sections first. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult than a traditional like rainbow hair color like jawbreaker or an ombre technique. Because the section is so fat here, it's gonna be easy to apply the color. But when you get back to the point of the head, it's so tiny, you have to make sure you're not like bleeding on the other sections. So obviously I'm gonna start by outlining. I like the base of my brush to be clean, but you can see I pick up a lot of product on the tip of my brush. That way I can easily tap it in at the root and I'm not smudging it all over the other sections. Just having a little bit on the end of your brush really allows you to get in close to those sections without getting them on the other ones. And then as I get closer to this point, I'm gonna turn my brush this way and I'm just gonna wiggle it in there and do strokes. So here you can see it's super clean sectioning. I didn't bleed on the other sections. That's the most important part when applying color, when doing this technique. This little point right here is a bitch to try and get color into, but I just use my brush like this in a vertical motion and I just go from the point and I swipe down because you can't miss the color at the point, especially when you have bleached hair all the way to the root. You gotta make sure you get that point. So now that we have that done, I'm just gonna section this off into sections like this. So as you can see, I'm just taking horizontal sections. So that way I'm saturating the hair and I'm pulling it down. So that way I'm not pulling it this way. I'm not pulling it that way. I really am trying not to touch these other sections. It's okay if you get a little bit of bleeding on other sections. I'm sure at some point when I'm applying this color, I'm going to accidentally touch some other blonde pieces, but I'm gonna try my damnedest not to get any other colors on any other sections. So I'm gonna use my finger and rub in here at the root. And as you can see, I like to use my hand as like a board. Anytime I'm doing color, it doesn't matter, not just this technique, but literally any technique, I use my hand as a board and I just go back and forth with the hair and it kind of like breaks the hair up so you're making sure to saturate really well. Now I'm just mushing all the hair together 
pulling it apart and you can see it's very saturated it looks really good just going to go along this part one more time making sure it's clean and i didn't miss anything i like to twist the hair while it processes so that way it's not like flapping everywhere so now we have that section done i'm going to wipe off my hands on this towel and we're going to move on to orange this towel i got is from bleach london they sent it to me in pr and i'm going to buy so many more of these it's a bleach proof towel and so when you're using bleach you're not going to stain the towel and it's black. So when I'm doing colors, I'm also not gonna stain it. It's like the perfect color towel. It also has this little like hook on it. So I hang it on my, my door. You guys can see how clean this parting is. God, I love stuff like that. And we're gonna outline the section. I'm gonna start where the pink is at on this side. The reason I'm starting here is because if I were to flip this section over and apply it to the back and then flip it back over and apply it to the front, I would have smushed this blonde section all over the pink and then it would have gotten pink on this side. Same thing, if I would have applied it to the back of this section and then flipped it over, I would have gotten orange on the blonde section. I normally like to start applying color next to the section I just applied. That way I'm not gonna transfer any of the color. And then I go ahead and go on the back side. Holding the section straight out also helps prevent the color from getting on other sections instead of like flipping it back and forth. Holding it straight out makes a world of difference. Really makes it a lot easier. As you can see, I do bend the section a tiny bit one way or the other, but for the most part, I try and keep it directly out. Maybe once I bleach my roots, I can try this on myself with like some pastel colors. I don't know if I would be brave enough to do this in neon colors on myself just because it's so easy to accidentally bleed the colors together and it would be so hard to see what you're trying to do on the top of your head. I can definitely try it though and I would love to try this technique on myself but I'll probably use pastel colors. Okay, so now we have the outline of the orange section done. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with the pink. I'm gonna start taking horizontal sections. I'm just gonna push this to the side and I'm gonna start saturating the section really good. Using my hand, working the color back and forth. A lot of these like techniques that I'm trying to tell you guys about, you can use with any other color you do, not just the pinwheel technique, but you can literally use a lot of these um, with multiple colors. It doesn't have to be just rainbow hair that you can use these techniques on. If you're doing any sort of hair color that has more than one shade in it, these techniques will really help keep your sectioning clean and hopefully will help prevent color bleeding. When you're doing multiple colors and the sectioning is so precise like this, getting a hair dye that's a little bit thicker and not as runny will definitely help you keep the colors in place. Like the color I'm using now is Manic Panic. It doesn't have any X Mondo in it, it's just Manic Panic. And Manic Panic is a little bit more runny. It's not runny, but it's not thick like an X Mondo shade is. So this is just Manic Panic on its own. And you guys can see it's a little bit more slippery. It's easier to saturate the hair with a thinner dye, but when you're doing sectioning and you're trying to get up close and personal and not bleed onto other sections, a little bit of a thicker dye definitely helps. A lot of these shades are mixed Manic Panic and Ex Mondo, so it's like a perfect middle formulation. You know, it's not too runny, it's not too thick, it's just like a perfect middle ground. So here we have this top section. I'm gonna use my finger and smush in the color up here. Work in the color, separate the hair, make sure it's getting covered. Look how good this looks, you guys. Oh, I love this, so beautiful. Okay, let's go in with the yellow shade. So I just pull down my next section and then continue to pin the rest of the hair out of the way. So that way I'm working with one section at a time. I'm gonna start in this front section, like I said. That way the orange has less of a chance of bleeding on this section. A lot of product on the tip of the brush, swipe it in there. All right, I'm just gonna continue applying the colors the same way I have for the first two sections. I will do a little time lapse for you guys so you can watch me apply the color section by section because I know it's satisfying to watch the color be applied, watch all of this blonde hair get covered up by some neon rainbow. So let me do a voiceover and I will speed through this part for you. So I'm just applying the colors in rainbow order and when I get to this next section that is green, I realized I had something else I wanted to tell you guys, so I'm gonna tell you that right now.
I just want to say real quick so as you can see here I started applying this green on the back section instead of the front like I told you guys earlier the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to accidentally get green on the yellow if I were to apply the green all over this section and then pull it forward I would get the green on the yellow the green is darker than the yellow so we want to avoid getting the darker colors on the lighter sections so that's why I start in the back because if I bring this forward and I accidentally get some yellow on this section it doesn't matter because the green is darker and it's going to cover it. So I know I talked a little bit about how versatile this technique is, but I really want to dive in deeper and give you guys some like inspiration or tips in case you do try this on yourself. I want you guys to really understand how many possibilities there are when you're doing this technique. So obviously you don't have to do rainbow colors. You could do whatever colors you want to do. If you just wanted to do like pink and purple, you could do like 12 different variations of pink and purple. Maybe you wanna do like a light pink to dark pink on one side and then you wanna do like a light purple to a dark purple. You could choose like blue and green and just do the whole head in blue and green. I've also seen this technique done with natural colors using like permanent hair color or demi-permanent hair color. You don't have to use vivid hair color or semi-permanent dyes. I've seen this done with like permanent hair color and they use like a black or a dark brown and then they have like blonde or white and it looks so cool because you have like those chunks of dark color and you have chunks of white color but it's still somewhat blended like you have enough definition and depth between all those shades but it still looks blended it doesn't look like choppy or like it wasn't meant to be there. One thing I would love to try with doing this technique is do like an ombre rainbow. Obviously you don't have to do rainbow but doing an ombre pattern while using the pinwheel technique I think would look so cool. So say for example the section I'm doing orange right now, instead of doing that whole entire section orange, I would just do orange at the root and then I would ombre the rainbow colors throughout the end. So I would do orange at the root and then I would do yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then this section I'm doing now, I would start with yellow and then I would do the rest of the hair strands in ombre color. That would look so cool and I definitely wanna try that in the future. Maybe I'll dye a wig that color so that way I can have um, this technique on a wig and I'm able to wear it. I just thought of something else that would be really cool. So say you started with pink on the first section of this, you could do like a darker pink at the root faded into a lighter pink at the end. And then on the next section, you could start with a darker orange at the root and then do a lighter orange at the end. So that way all over, it's a darker rainbow at the root and then it fades into lighter rainbow at the end. I've never seen that done with this pinwheel technique. So I might have to try that one because I think it would be absolutely gorgeous to have like the depth at the root and then and fading into like a really light rainbow pastel on the ends. All right, you guys, I got the color applied. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks so freaking cool. I definitely have to do this on myself maybe this summer once I bleach my roots because it is so cool and such a beautiful technique. Look at this. Gorgeous. And now that the color is applied, you can really see that central point where I started all of my sectioning. So let me spin this around and kind of show you here. So as you can see, we got purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, pink, and then the colors repeat on this side. This is so cool. I cannot wait to rinse this and see what it looks like. It looks so sick when the color's on, so hopefully it looks just as good once it's washed off and styled. I'm gonna let this process for around an hour. I wanna make sure the color really absorbs into the hair, especially because it is a mannequin. I wanna let it sit for a while so it can really absorb in there. I'm going to rinse it using cold water so that way the colors don't bleed on each other. And I will be back once she is styled so I can show you guys the finished result. All right, you guys, we are back and I'm so excited to show you the results probably one of my favorite rainbow hair colors I've ever been able to do like on someone else even though it's a mannequin okay so here is the hair it is absolutely gorgeous I am obsessed obviously I stained her face oops my bad but the hair gorgeous let me spin her around look at how beautiful this is are you kidding me the colors I used are so beautiful and so spot on to what I was hoping they would be. Look at how beautiful this is. And like from the top, it's all blended, you know? Like you get 
kind of the same effect as that jawbreaker technique, especially like in the back. It looks very, very similar to like what my hair looks like, but the top is so much more blended out. And let's say you love rainbow hair, but you prefer like blue and green. You could always start these two sections with like a blue and a green. So that way on the top, it almost looks like you have split dye hair that's blue and green. So like your two favorite colors of the rainbow, you could start here. So that way that's the majority of the color on top. I think blue and green or green and yellow would be beautiful to start right here so that way it's like split dye because obviously the front two colors are going to be the most prominent. So pink and purple is also adorable, love that, but look how blended everything is. It's so gorgeous and you still get all of those pops of color. It's just so pretty and the shades I used are so vibrant and I love them. They go so well together. Like these are my favorite neon rainbow shades. Like I try to mix this color scheme every time I do rainbow hair. You guys can tell it's very similar to the hair color I used on this wig. These are just like my absolute favorite neon colors to mix up. I definitely need to try this on my hair. And if I do try this on my hair, I'll probably start with like blue and green up here or something just to make it a little bit different. When you flip the hair over, it looks so cool. So if you do this and you wear your hair up, it's going to look like a pinwheel when you have your hair up. So obviously you can see it's gonna be pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So if you wear your hair up, you're gonna be able to really see the pinwheel technique and it's gonna look like a rainbow when you wear your hair up too. So that's another perk of doing this versus like the jawbreaker technique. The jawbreaker technique, you don't always get like a perfect rainbow when you wear your hair up. And when you're doing this, it's going to be a perfect rainbow when you wear your hair up. And it's also gonna be a beautiful rainbow masterpiece when you wear your hair down. I am just obsessed with this. If you do this color and then you decide to wear your hair over to the side, you're gonna be able to see more of those pops of color and it's not gonna be as much purple on top. So you can see I gave her like a deep side part and now we have the purple and blue overlaying on the pink and you're gonna see more of the pops of color on the side of the head versus just like mostly purple on top. So depending on how you part your hair, this is gonna look different every single way you part it. Same thing with this side if you parted it over here you're gonna see so many more of those beautiful rainbow colors you're gonna see more of the pink and the orange and the yellow and the green and it looks more like a rainbow but it's still blended like this color technique is gorgeous it's also super simple like the sectioning doesn't take a long time whenever I do the jawbreaker technique sectioning takes forever because you're sectioning so many tiny pieces and this sectioning is so much easier to do than the jawbreaker technique and you do get a similar result. If you have any friends or family that want rainbow hair, that's a great technique to do. I feel like it's very beginner friendly. It's not overly hard and if you feel like it is difficult, you can always take less sections. I did 12 sections but you could take six sections and it would make it even easier and it's so customizable to whatever you guys want like whatever color scheme you want whatever pattern you want you could do like there's just so many options with this technique and it's simplified i will be sure to leave a link to the mannequin the mannequin stand and all the color i used in the description down below in case you guys want to get your hands on it also that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to check out my instagram the link to that is in the description down below i post way more of my everyday life on there give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I love you guys so much and until next time guys stay weird. Bye!